Chocolate toxicosis. Chocolate toxicosis is caused by methylated xanthine alkaloids, or methyl xanthines, present in the seeds of the Theobroma cacao plant, and the chocolate products we make from it, primarily theobromine and caffeine. Often, chocolate products contain both of these in varying amounts. Generally, darker chocolates contain more methyl xanthines than milk or white chocolates. Both of these may be referred to generally as methyl xanthines throughout the video. Often, dogs present with chocolate toxicosis, but cats are also susceptible. And so are livestock animals that consume mulch made from cocoa bean hulls. When ingested, chocolate products may be upsetting to the stomach and cause abdominal distension, especially when a lot of chocolate is consumed, and also vomiting and diarrhea. The high fat content may even cause pancreatitis in susceptible patients. Theobromine and caffeine are absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract, metabolized in the liver, and distributed throughout the body. They also undergo enterohepatic recycling. Entero referring to the intestines, hepatic referring to the liver, and recycling meaning to cycle again. This means that some theobromine and caffeine after being metabolized in the liver, are excreted into the bile, back into the intestines, and reabsorbed back into the liver, which can be problematic when we want to get rid of these metabolites. When distributed throughout the body, methyl xanthines work in these main mechanisms of action. First is the competitive antagonism of adenosine receptors. Adenosine antagonizes adenylate cyclase which is an enzyme that synthesizes cyclic AMP from ATP. So when adenosine can't bind to these receptors because theobromine and caffeine are blocking them, there will be more adenylate cyclase and consequently more cyclic AMP. We'll get back to cyclic AMP in a moment because methyl xanthines also inhibit phosphodiesterase, which is an enzyme responsible for breaking down cyclic AMP. And when that's inhibited, cyclic AMP is not broken down so there will be lots of it. Now, cyclic AMP increases the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla. This causes TNS stimulation, leading to restlessness and hyperactivity, as well as tachycardia, tachypnea, diuresis, and hypokalemia. Methyl xanthines also increase levels of calcium inside the cell, letting more come in and inhibiting its sequestration into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is significant in skeletal and cardiac muscle cells, as this increases their strength and contractility. This contributes to the tachycardia, which may develop into a tachyarrhythmia due to the premature ventricular contractions. The skeletal muscles may become rigid and the patient ataxic. Tremors could develop, which, together with the CNS stimulation, may progress to seizures. The patient may fall into a coma and eventually die from cardiac arrhythmia, hyperthermia, and slash or respiratory failure. Diagnosis is based on history of access to and ingestion of chocolate products and other foodstuffs containing caffeine and theobromine, as well as on matching clinical signs. Treatment. There is no antidote for chocolate toxicosis. Treatment involves decontamination, symptomatic therapy, and supportive care. Decontamination is done by inducing vomiting and giving activated charcoal with cathartic. The activated charcoal adsorbs the remaining metal centines, and the cathartic allows it to be excreted quickly. This is important because enterohepatic recycling occurs, and we want it out of the system as soon as possible. Gastric lavage may be performed on unconscious patients. Symptomatic therapy. The more life-threatening symptoms are addressed first. Seizures can be controlled with diazepam and muscle tremors with methocarbamol. Antiarrhythmic agents may be given, such as metoprolol and lidocaine. Atropine would be of benefit for any bradycardia. And other clinical signs are treated as they arise. Do note that the following drugs are contraindicated because they can worsen the toxicosis. These drugs are erythromycin, cimetidine, propanolol, enrofloxacin, and marbofloxacin. 
Supportive care includes fluid therapy to correct electrolyte imbalances, artificial ventilation for respiratory difficulties, electrocardiography to monitor the patient's cardiac status, and urinary catheterization to promote urination because methylxanthines and their metabolites can be reabsorbed through the urinary bladder. Prognosis is good for patients presented within 1-6 to six hours of ingestion, and decontamination is done effectively. Prognosis is guarded in patients with severe cardiac arrhythmias and seizures. Prevention Keep chocolate and other sources of methylxanthines out of your pet's reach, most especially during the holidays.